There you go. Recording. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, people. Tonight here, Penny and I interviews again, second time talking to David Silverman. Thank you very much, Dave, for coming. Penny, thanks for having me back on the show. It's great to be here again. <laughs> Always fun to talk to you. So tonight we're here to talk a little bit about atheism again, but more about liberty, freedom, and this new rupture on the atheist community that we have experienced in this such a weird year, 2020. Uh, but uh, what is this? What what are you going through again, Dave? In to like if first was like a left infiltrate or the left the, the atheist community was more made more of leftists. And then yeah. it came a big rupture of like Me Too movement, PC culture, wokenism, uh so many uh sections that split the community and you know I don't know, uh, even veganism was something that was causing, and the LGBTQ issues caused some first rupture. You went through some hugely attack that we talked in our first conversation on Me Too movement. But what is what is going on now? The atheists now have to choose to be tolerant and to be secular or be intolerant and be almost like this cancel culture that is happening in puritanism <clears throat> well tell me what is the, what is your the way i see it <laughs> yeah if, if, you, if you look at um the feminism movement um the feminism movement won okay the the second wave feminism movement won um my feminism right the the feminism of egalitarianism the feminism of lifting the glass ceiling and and women having equal work for equal pay, that stuff um, succeeded. That feminist movement won. But instead of saying, yay, we won, the feminist movement kind of morphed into this third wave, um, uh, you know, equal pay for equal work, you know, e equity over equality type of thing, which is... You know, it's completely devoid. It, it's very, very separate. Third wave feminism and second wave feminism are completely different. Second wave feminism. Feminists that love to bring up a wage gap. Yeah, I mean, the wage gap is a great example, right? Um, when I was younger, the wage gap was about equal work for equal pay. There was a uh, a, um, a commercial on TV. They played it over and over and over again. I remember it because it was Batgirl. And uh, Batgirl did this equal work for equal pay. You could still find this on YouTube. And she says, uh, uh, I, I, I remember this word for word. Same job, same employer means equal pay for men and women. Okay. That was the push back then. Um, that has been. But there's still a pay gap. The pay gap is because women, now that they have their freedom, their equality, they are making choices different from men. And that's causing women in, in, in total to be paid less than men, not because of any sort of discrimination, but because of choices that they make. And the important thing, and this is a, a little bit of a, a departure from what I was saying, but when you're talking about equity challenges, okay, the problem, our mutual problem when there's an equity imbalance is the portion of that imbalance that's due to bigotry. OK, it's the portion of that imbalance that's due to racism or misogyny or intolerance of some way, because that's not cool. If women are being paid less than men because of bigotry, we all have a duty to fix it. If, however, women are being paid less than men because they're being offered the exact same opportunities and because women are different from men, they're choosing roles that they know cost less or pay less. There's no problem there at all, in my opinion, right? So third wave feminism doesn't agree with me. No, third wave and I, feminism, think it, I actually think it was great that you brought this up because sometimes we all just finish the conversation when we disagree if there is or no real uh, wage gap in, yeah. the, in the planet. And many people should keep going instead of keep of giving up or dropping the conversation because it's important the definition of what is the wage gap if it, mainly when you talk to feminists of third wave feminists if they don't 
the, if they cannot acknowledge what is factual from the statistics and keep doing a misinterpretation. And my point now is, are those third wave feminists that use wage gap as an argument, are they dishonest? Deliberately, they know what it means and they want to use as an argument anyways, or they, they're they dumb. They don't understand it. You they're, know? Not dumb. <laughs> they're, they're not dumb. They're, they're desperate to try and stay relevant. Okay. Their movement succeeded, but they want to stay relevant, which brings us back to your first question about the <laughs> atheism movement. Okay. The feminism movement is lying and is doing something that is dishonest by twisting the numbers and twisting the, the twisting anything they can to make it look like there's a bigotry problem, a misogyny problem in this country where there is not. The atheist movement is in a similar situation, right? And when I talk about the atheist movement, I talk about the American atheist movement. Um, the country has changed, okay? And, you know, it used to be that, you know, I mean, when I first started as an atheist activist, I mean, it was very common for me to be told that I was the first atheist that somebody had ever met. Okay? I mean, I must have been told that dozens of times in my first years as an activist. When I mean, was that? I, oh, 1997, uh, 98. Uh, oh, well... Yeah, and even before that, 96 was when I became an activist, but even before that, I was telling people I was an activist, and people would tell me I was the first activist they ever met. But when was the last time that's happened? I mean, it's been years and years since somebody has told me that I'm the first atheist they've ever met. In fact, it's been years and years since anybody has told me that they have been told that they are the first atheist that anyone has ever met. So the... Um, the number of people who call themselves atheists in America doubled over the 2010 decade. Um, and I think uh, what Richard Dawkins said at the Reason Rally, at the first Reason Rally, which is that we had reached a tipping point, I think he was right. Um, I think the tipping point is obvious. I think the growth from atheism is unstoppable now. Um, I think... Uh, the um, the movement, therefore, is in a quagmire, okay? Because you've got this um, you've got this woke left that is doing this this horrible "you're with us or against us" mentality. I remember when we all hated on George W. Bush for saying "you're either with us or against us," but now this is the dogma of the left: you're either with us or you're bad. Um, and that is um, infiltrating the atheist movement. And the atheist movement, I mean, it, it's up to the leadership, right? You can do one of two things. You can hold that force back and keep your people in and keep it broad. Or you can say, you know, yes, and just follow that. Now, what the atheist movement writ large has done is follow that. There are exceptions to the rule. Atheist Alliance international atheist for liberty they're not doing the woke shit uh, uh atheist republic not doing the woke shit but the big um players in the american atheism movement they're woke ffrf is i don't think is not that bad but ffrf is just the legal arm right um and when you look at uh the problem here is, is larger than this okay because I guess I guess when we talked about, for example, uh, the last guest I mentioned, and I bring up many times how the atheist experience have became so woke on when entered this type of conversations, they, they would totally shut people off on the show like, to say things that disagree with the LGBTQ agenda. But I I, I still watch. And I have to give them some credit for the, at least last week. They spent good amount of time <laughs> with some guys that I, I would not even give that much chance and, and have that much patience. Uh, really trying to argue and try to be epistemologically honest. So maybe, you know, maybe they can, maybe they listen to the criticism and maybe there is a way to still 
uh, unite. I, I I feel like it's weird to say that because I don't think it was a pretension of atheists in general of leaders to think that we would unite atheists together. We always talk about how atheists are That's just my like, idea. <clears throat> that was exactly what I was doing. <laughs> in some way, yes, That's but we always now. talk about uh, the new atheists and the. The four horsemen of the apocalypse that uh, Devon brought, uh, Atheist Unstoppable, and all that movement, the proud atheist putting you there, uh, always kind of understood the limitation was like, the only thing that makes us the same is that we, we lack belief in those deities. We, we don't believe. That is the only thing we have in common. But it's really difficult to hurt cats because now you're talking about even what I talked a little bit more to other uh, authors that are seeking for truth and epistemology is how you have those conversations when you talk to postmodernists that everything is possible and then of course you're not going to be able to put all those atheists together but we should be able to at least have a civil disagreement and have conversations where we we where we disagree you, you know you and then try civil, to bring you can't have a civil conversation with a postmodernist OK, because if you say that they're wrong in any sort of way, they're just going to say, well, that's just your opinion and, and, and put their head in the sands. But but here's a, here's here's an important point. OK, um, when you're talking about the left infiltration of the atheist movement, there there's a, a huge ramification. OK, and this is where I, I mean. I don't look. This is going to sound like sour grapes, okay? I don't want this this episode to sound like Dave is complaining about the atheist movement sour grapes, okay? I do, however, know how to do their job better than they do, apparently. But I will say, <laughs> I mean, how many Monday morning foot quarterbacks actually do know better than the quarterbacks, right? But look, if you're going to be an activist, the important thing to understand, especially if you're running an organization or running a movement. It's important to have um, an incremental gift. Uh, uh, it's important to bring something to the table. It's important to, to add something to the pot. It's important to not be the atheists who agree with you. Yay, you. Okay? It can't be that. Because if it's just about the atheists who agree with you, yay, you, uh, you, you, you don't have an organization. You don't have a movement. You're just a group of atheists cheering somebody else's movement. Okay? So... When you when when you're like an atheist activist, you should if you're going to be um, fighting along the side of the LGBT activists, you don't want to fight along the side and say, "Yay, everything you say is right." You want to fight along the side and say, "LGBTQ is a separation of church and state issue, and people need to see the LGBTQ movement from our issue too, from our side, because if you see it from our side, it further supports their agenda." Look, we're adding to the conversation. They're not there. The, 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 the gay rights activists were saying we have the right to live our lives. And this is a good example. The, and we want to be our way. And we were there saying this is a separation of church and state issue. Separate church and state. The only reason you don't like gays is because of religion. And we were stirring that pot. That was adding to the pot. That was adding to the argument. Um, think of... Um, Think of when uh, somebody writes a uh, uh, has a court report, right? Um, uh, when, when somebody has a, a lawsuit and you want to support the lawsuit, uh, I, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, but when you write a brief to the lawsuit, let's say the again the FFRF was doing a lawsuit from one way, or I should say, let's say the uh, uh, LGBT organizations were doing a lawsuit from one way, and we were to file a um, I can't think of the name, but a statement to the court in support of it, we would take a different tack, right? We would take a different tack to get to the same conclusion. That's adding a leg that they hadn't done. Otherwise, we're just spinning our wheels. So what the problem is, is that you've got the atheist movement writ large, which has completely given in to the woke left, right? They've completely given in to the woke left. They are... Uh, there was a beheading. Did you know there was a beheading 
just a few days ago in France, and neither AHA, because I looked, neither AHA, nor American Atheist, nor SCA, nor SSA did anything about it. It was disgusting. They ignored a terroristic murder of a, of a professor who showed the Prophet Muhammad because, again, Islam is okay with wokeness. Right. And so now so this is this is what's happening to the atheist movement. The atheist movement is abandoning their ex-Muslims because they're woke and they're just becoming another echo of the woke movement. They're becoming a yay. We agree with you for the wokeists who are atheists. And what the result is going to be is that they're not adding anything new. They're not adding. Hey, yes, wokeness is a separation of church and state issue. If it is, that's, they're not talking about it. It is from the other side, baby. Um, they're not talking about wokeness is about atheism in one way or another, or atheists are affected one way or another, or, or they're not doing any of that. They're just saying yes and towing the line. And, um, I mean, it's discouraging as hell. I mean, it's uh, it's discouraging as hell to... to, to, to um, to watch that, I mean, I'm not exactly watching it, but that's what's happening. Um, and I've, you know, I've stopped watching it, and I think a lot of people have for that reason. Uh, they're not doing anything interesting anymore. Um, and no, this is not sour grapes. Uh, uh I think that, um, I do have a pretty informed opinion here. Um, I have been in the job. I have known the job. I do know that movement pretty well. And, and I'm not seeing much strategy happening. I'm not seeing much strategy. I'm seeing spinning wheels. I'm seeing treading water. I'm seeing tweeting other people's tweets and signing on amicus briefs. I'm sign, uh, sending amicus briefs to other people's, um, lawsuits without adding anything to it. Um, I'm, 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 and I'm comparing it to the feminism of old, which had to change in order to survive. Atheism won. The American atheist movement won. Atheism in other countries still has a lot of problems. And atheism in this country has a lot of problems in that they've completely and stupidly abandoned the right. Um... I, I, I can't express how stupid it is for the mm -hmm. entire atheist movement to have abandoned the right. Um, that's where most of your donors are, you dipshits. That's where most, that's where a lot of people are. Good people uh, are on the right and in the center. And you're adopting positions that are so far left that nobody can identify with you. And you're not adding any benefit. You're not adding anything to the to the pot yeah i think i, I mean, think i i was so discouraged when nobody did anything for that beheaded professor for that beheaded guy nobody did anything come yeah. on guys it is it is sad to hear that and the worst thing, I think, what we have to bring is like how the woke and this idea of this, we, we even seen uh, atheists standing against other atheists saying like they deserve to be banned. For example, mentioning, you know, uh, Armin got banned from Twitter, you know, the, one of the last bans on Twitter for blasphemy. And yeah. now we, we talk about, we have seen atheists talking about some other atheists deserving to be banned or deserving to be uh, threatened because they were too provocative. And I have talked here about how we need, again, this, that proud atheist that you were, that uh, Nate talks to you, brought uh, a little bit hope when I watched his videos talk about how we still need to fight for atheism in the United States because it's just so common that people would justify violence that would say like, yeah, sh sh atheists, be quiet. You are the ones that are causing the problems. You know, the, the victim blaming that they would definitely not accept in any other scenario. No. But it is acceptable. 
it, 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 it is normal and it is so ugh. it's upsetting to see the hypocrisy it's upsetting to see atheists going after other atheists you know all the time i believe it's good to say all the time that i was there except at the very end when i went a little bit insane with wokeness um i was a big tent atheist I was a big tenter because we're all in this together, because united we stand. And to say that somebody is too provocative and should be canceled, I mean, all right, so let me toot my horn just a second, okay? Let me toot my horn for a second. This is my book. In my book, I talk about how my being provocative literally changed the country in measurable ways. And I show you the data and the charts in this book of how being a provocative atheist, me, at me myself, changed the country in a measurable way. And I show it in the book. And so when I'm talking to somebody who says, well, being provocative never solved anything. I laugh in their face. These are children. How in the world would we be canceling, canceling atheists because they're provocative? I mean, it's ridiculous. If you cancel the loudest atheists, all we'll have is quiet atheists. And that's just not a good idea. Now, is it? I mean, that's just not a good idea. Unless, of course, you're woke uh, and you don't want anybody's feelings hurt. Um... I'm not good at not hurting feelings. I've had my feelings hurt plenty, plenty of times too. Um, I, I've, uh, I'm not, I, I'm really not concerned with feelings as much as I am concerned with the real issues that are facing this country. And I think we all should be, you know? And I, I think if we're getting into the situation where atheists are trying to get other atheists canceled, I mean, that's buffoonery. It's buffoonery. It's, it's buffoonery. It's, 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 this is a child who needs to shut up and sit in the corner. And I guarantee you, they've had, they got lots of participation trophies in their bedroom that they still keep. I mean, that, it's ridiculous. Dave, not making anything better in our conversation going to still make you a little stressed about the conversation <laughs> because we still need to talk about the one of the last issues on that I've seen you going through on Twitter and you it you it, it was good it generated a lot of really nice conversations all over the internet for the last weeks uh, m more even than that. Uh, but uh, about the racism, anti-racist Black Lives Matter. Could you just tell us, summarize a little bit for people that do not know that it was another fight, and I think it, that's why I, I see on you uh, a voice for reason and for some type of, you know, for tolerance, but also for a reason and to yell in the middle of this, this conversation about let's talk against the myths the social myths that have been created to like is systemic racism and right. and on and on. Uh, well, I think the first thing to say is that we're all equal partners in this world. Uh, we're all equal citizens in this planet. And um, everybody is full of shit sometimes. Uh, I'm full of shit sometimes. And when I'm full of shit, my partner will call me on my being full of shit. And if I say to my partner, don't call me on my shit, um, I'm coming at it from my perspective. You don't understand my perspective. My partner would come back at me and say, no, I'm going to call you on your shit because I have a perspective too. And my perspective is that you're full of shit. That's fair. That's all good. It's all, it's all normal. It's respectful. And it's the dialogue that's not happening. And, um, I feel very bad about that because the dialogue that's happening is a is a distraction dialogue. Um, I believe we do not have a police brutality problem at all in this country. Um, and I believe that systemic racism is all but gone in this country. Um, I can back those statements up. 
I can and 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 I believe that the Black Lives Matter movement slash organization uh, relies on knowingly faulty numbers, knowingly wrong information um, to peddle a knowingly false narrative, which creates um, which which self creates the false narrative creates more narratives. You know, people see the bigotry. Um, and creates the hatred and divides our country. And I used to be a big proponent of Black Lives Matter, for example, because I used to think that, according to Black Lives Matter, I mean, cops were just murdering black people on the streets. I mean, it was just... It was, and just for being thing. black. <laughs> it, just for being black. You, you, you stop them and they, they, they were just killing people on the streets. And then I found out that uh, the number of unarmed black people who were killed uh, by cops in 2019... Well, somewhere around nine, maybe 14. But it's not a wave of racist cops shooting black people. And a bunch of those black people, they didn't have guns, but they weren't innocent. Breonna Taylor is a good example. She was one of them. Good, she shouldn't have been shot, but she wasn't innocent. Okay, she or, was... A, or, she, uh, or the other guy that did not have a gun, but had a knife and stabbed the police. Right, Exactly. Uh, and, and so um, I think the Black Lives Matter issue, and, and I have taken on an, in my um, in my uh, videos, which I've started doing, I've started calling my black partners on their shit. And I use in my ammunition uh, my other black partners, the black conservatives that I've been uh, really watching a lot of. Um, who are, unless they're talking about God, smart as fuck, okay? Black conservatives, wow, these guys have, these guys know their shit, unless, of course, they're talking about a man in the sky, in which case they fly off the rail into la-la land. I really <laughs> would love and to I have a conversation with people all the time, because you can actually bring all those examples, and not just the black conservatives, but conservatives in general i i watch like for example ben shapiro and when he's not talking about his religious beliefs he's totally reasonable no yeah. problem and that's yeah. why i follow him clavin michael knows and all the other guys but sometimes when they bring the god as an argument and then like you said and then you see them like going completely out of the rail <laughs> see their eyes glaze over on the screen <laughs> but it, it but so I've been, um, I've been making some statements that are true, and and I think we need to make these statements because we don't have a systemic racism problem in this country, and we don't have a police brutality and problem in this country. We have a problem in this country of a perception of police brutality in the African American community, and we have a lot of problems in the African American community that are the responsibility of the African American community, such as single parents, such as a hatred towards education, such as a tolerance for criminals and crimes. This is what's hurting the African-American population by leaps and bounds over their white and Latino poor counterparts. Okay? It's unique to the African-American community, and it is not inclusive of black people who come in from other countries. It's only African-American. It's not black. So it's not racist. It's cultural. OK, it's cultural and it's right there. And if we white folks who are so guilty about slavery, we're having so much white guilt that we cannot call our black partners on their bullshit and say when the and when our black partners say to us, hey, you know what? We got a big problem here because all cops are racist and we have to cut cops, which, of course, is going to do a whole bunch of things to the white community as well as the black community. It's up to us to say, um, why are you saying that? Uh, where's your numbers? Uh, how do we know that? All right, show me the numbers of where the cops are more racist against. Show it. Show this to me, and show me where there's not systemic anti-racism in place. Show me a policy that needs to improve. Show me a law that needs to change. Show me an example of something that is systemic that can be fixed. If all you're doing is complaining that it's bad equity then you're not complaining about something systemic at all. You're complaining about something that's intrinsic to the African-American community. 
I just had a, a good conversation with my friend Steve Hill, a black guy born and raised in the ghetto of St. Louis, real bad neighborhood. Um, I like the guy. Uh, he's not the he's not he's not dumb, but he's not like a genius. He's an averagely intelligent guy. He's an averagely driven guy. Uh, he was born and raised. I don't know if he was a single family dude, uh, a single parent, or or he had both family. But he was raised really poor. He didn't become a felon, and he went to the army. He came out, got a profession, and now he lives in a nice house, a big house in the suburbs with dogs and kids. And this is not a victim. This is not a victim. And he claims, still, he claims to the, that there is this victim's age status because people cling to their victim status just like Christians cling to the Christian persecution complex. Atheists do it too. Jews do it too. Everybody claims to be persecuted. And or what we have to that do behaves and is communistic enough to have this mob group mentality, you know. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I thought, I thought it was interesting. I just watched yesterday the. I love Larry Elder when he talks about all those issues and his video of Michelle Obama masterclass of how to use the black card. Have you watched that video? I have not. <laughs> you need to see that. It's really good. <laughs> so, yeah, and he brings, of course, he's always, he is a black conservative that uh, definitely is talking about the same issues that you have laid down with so many people and have, so, I, I guess, much more credits and authority now to talk about this subject. Well, well the, pro <laughs> the problem is, and, and, and here's where the humanism comes in, okay? Because if we're in a situation where we don't have a racist system, but we're trying to cure systemic racism. And so we're, I don't know, firing hundreds of cops at a time or, uh, or, or doing other things that are going to make it harder. If we are trying to solve racism when there isn't a racism problem, we're not going to solve the real problem. Okay. Fine. Resources are finite. Effort is finite. And, and black lives matter. And innocent black lives matter more than guilty black lives. Innocent lives, period, matter more than guilty lives. And when we look at the, 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 the crime rate and we project it, we realize that there's a whole lot of black lives and non-black lives in the future who will be victims of those crimes. Who will be victims of those crimes because we didn't solve those crimes in advance, because we didn't look at that problem, because we were focusing on the fictional systemic racism. And that's what I'm worried about. That's why I don't, that's why I'm getting involved in this. It's not just that the black community is blaming the white community for their own problems, which they are. It's the problem is that their, 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 uh, and I should have said the African American community. the The problem is that when we're all busy trying to figure out who's more racist than who, and and does that uh, are are all white people racist and is STEM racist and is math racist? Well, we're all trying to figure out all that horse shit. Actual children are gonna die. Actual parents are gonna die. Actual people, innocent valuable, worthwhile people are going to die at the hands of criminals because we're not handling the systemic issues inside the African-American community that are actually causing those future injuries. And so I, I feel it very strongly that we need to talk to our partners and call our partners on their shit. And our partners should be able to handle that just like we would be able to handle that. And I, I think when our partners say um, all these black people are getting shot by cops, therefore it's a cop problem, I think it's imperative for us to say, well, were they committing crimes? Were they armed? Were they resisting arrest? Because if you're trying to blame that on white folk, that's not a thing. We have to go into the African-American community and fix this anti-cop, anti-education, anti-family mentality that is destroying their culture and not let a few of them blame us and send us into this 
fake white guilt rage type of thing where we're firing cops. They're firing 100 cops in Seattle right now, not doing it organized. They're just firing the cops. It's going to lead to more death. Does anybody care? Does anybody care? Actual human beings are going to die in Seattle now. Does anybody care? Because we're curing racism by firing cops. Yeah, and when when you, you talked about, uh, for example, it, it behaves like a religious ritual in the way that it is picking and choosing examples of police brutality when they can match the color. For example, what happened with George Floyd, that apparently was not even the cops fault, the death right? of the guy, but because the color would match, they totally jumped on it and used it and was the, the what carried on for... How many more deaths after one innocent death was taken? One yeah. innocent life was taken? A lot. So then another 30, at least the last time I heard was like 29, I think. It, that is ridiculous. So the principles are broken and that's why we are not Black Lives Matter. And now some people come to call us racist for not standing for a new type of modern racism. It is ridiculous. Uh -huh. I, 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 I don't care. I, I don't care. I think uh, it's calling me a racist is ridiculous. Um, I did an entire thing, and, and you could see the 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 um, the participation trophies again. I said that calling a white person a racist is a pejorative term, and that if a person calls a white person a racist without cause, it's like calling a black guy a nigger, which I don't like to say, but it's pejorative. And that if you call a race a, a white person a racist who's not a racist, you've committed an aggression and you owe that white person an apology. I stand so fucking by that statement. And you would be surprised at how many people freak the fuck out. How dare you, a white guy, because all I'm supposed to do as a white guy, I have two choices when somebody calls me a racist. I get to apologize for being a racist or I get to say nothing. Those are my two choices. I don't get to say Fuck you, I'm not a racist, you take that back. <laughs> but I do. I do, okay? And, and I think that we non-racist white people should adopt that term. Fuck you, I'm not a racist, take that back. Yeah. I mean, I, I gotta, t you know, and I told this to Steve Hill, who, again, is uh, has, has been, you know, I've known him for over a decade. He's, I think it's been closer to 15 years that I've known Steve. And he's seen me use my power for the good of diversity. He has seen me proactively be diverse with my power. He saw me doing it before it was in vogue, before there was cancel culture, before there was virtue signaling. I was using every bit of my power to afford diversity, to, to support diversity, because I know the value of diversity. Because I know the value of differing beliefs, different cultures get differing, differing beliefs. It's not about color of skin. If you get a whole bunch of people with a whole bunch of different skin colors all agreeing on the same thing, you do not have diversity. You've got tokens, okay? It's important to have diversity of thought, not diversity of, of, of color. And I did a lot. And you got to tell you something, Fanny, I'm real proud of myself for all the stuff that I've done in the name of diversity. I was well aware. I was ahead of the curve. I did some good stuff. And for some piece of snot to come up and call me a racist because I'm calling my black partners on their shit, fuck you. I'm not, and, and there's no reason for us to take it. And I'm supposed to say, oh, tell me why I'm a racist. Oh, you think I'm a racist? You must be telling the truth. Tell me why I'm a racist. I have to say that. No, fuck you. I'm not Archie Bunker. And putting me in that same category is just going to give you a great big... Uh, wall, and we're not going to cooperate. Um, if anybody wants to work with me, they have to not be racist, and they have to know that I'm not a racist, and we're going to work together towards our common goal of humanism and elevating everybody equally. Equal opportunity, personal responsibility, but equal opportunity. Yeah, I, that's, I love that's that. Not you racism those... is not bad at all. Go ahead. You brought those concepts because it is important to understand. And I think that is the what is divisive now is if you, if you want equity or equality or if you want actually to have principles or if you just want to tell people how to behave. Because when you have yeah. principles, you don't need to watch anybody else.
you can't be libertarian. You can't be like, look, those are the principles. Don't kill, don't steal, and have, have everybody live our lives and respect those principles, and we're going to be okay. And be tolerant to other people, like you said, believing different from you. They don't need to be canceled. They don't need to be put apart. They don't need to be... Uh, they need to be brought in. Okay, if they believe different from you, they need to be brought into your circles so you can learn. Yeah, you <laughs> See can. How that works? It, yeah, challenge your <laughs> beliefs, challenge your convictions. It is very oh important. God. One one thing that I would like to close our conversation, Dave, is to talk a little bit about objective morals because uh, I have recently talked to Sargon of Akkad, that wow. was someone that I wanted to talk for a very long time, but. It feels a little bit in the middle of our conversation that as many of the new atheists in the last decade turn to be utilitarians that believe in a, some conservative way that they can find uh, morals by themselves without religions, but most of people don't have high IQ or capacity to get into morals if they don't have religions to guide them. And for me, it's funny because I was just sharing with you, I was watching that video, old of yours, like six years old right now. And you had the answer that uh, we were debating and I, was, I felt a, a little bit that we were almost talking over uh, each other a little bit when I was talking to Sargon because I wanted to point to him. And that's my, my I would say like I'm, I'm maybe more than an atheist now to say that I fight this idea of people need religious to have morals because I believe, as you, that we cannot base our, our morals in commandments, that that the punishment is death. Right. We, we cannot have double standards. And that was my point with him all the time. It's like any, any religious like, or all religions they are bad morals because they are double standard morals and not just because they are good morals. No, their morals, it's disguised behind a God that will tell you you can break those morals. And right. that is why it's bad. And and I think you point out in that video when you mentioned like, you guys keep talking about how this is moral, but any of the breaking, any of their rules, it's punished by death. Right. This cannot be moral, objective. And that's why I th I, th <laughs> I think we all can agree there is such an objective morals. And and I feel like the atheist community just lacks that. We, what we lost in the first new atheist to second atheist uh, movement, new atheism as movement, what we lost all the time is because it feels like we don't have this answer for morality that many people believe so. But we actually have better answers for morality than any other religions that will tell you, don't kill, but you can do it. If I say so, or if it's the enemy group. Uh, and and I think it's the mob mentality, it's the group mentality, it's the negative uh, idea of polarizing groups, demonizing groups, and everything that you always talk. So I still believe that you are the big leader that we need. You know, because I keep pointing, like, I talk to Rock, I, I, I'm looking forward to talk to Yaron Brook, that is objective, is individualist, and I think he has a lot to bring to the conversation. But you have all, everything, you have the charisma, and most of all, the proud, you know, the pride that we actually need, and that we still uh, need, because there is no place, even in North America, that I think is normalized to be an atheist, the same way is normalized to be any other religion. And, sorry, saying as religion, but right. talk, speaking of religious level, here in Canada, they actually ask you in a job interview, what is your belief? And then you have to say that you're an atheist, and it comes much more after, <laughs> because they are very yeah. religious here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think there's room in the American atheist movement for me anymore. Um, I think what we've seen when I went to when I was rehired at uh, AAI or when I was hired at AAI, um, I, th I think what you saw, what we saw was the, uh, I mean, everybody turned, okay? Everybody dis disconnected. The, uh, Richard Dawkins Foundation, CFI, uh, AHA, AA, obviously, um, FFRF, and um, SCA, not SCA, uh, uh, SSA. All those organizations 
disavowed themselves from AAI just because they hired me. Okay. Um, didn't matter. And of course, I, I'll just go into that. It didn't matter that I'm innocent. They just found me guilty. And then the false, the third false me too, the, the, the Rebecca Vitzman uh, lie. She um, essentially, for those of you who don't know, she essentially lured me into a party and waited until I touched her on the back and said that I touched her on the back. And that was sexual assault. And actually yeah, have filed charges that. against me. Yeah, and it was it, it's 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 all bogus and it's and it's pathetic. But at the same time, um, you know, it's a huge distraction from the movement. Okay, if if I'm going to be a part of the movement and I'm going to attract that kind of madness, and I'm going to unite. I mean, yeah, it's nice to see the movement united for once. But at least they would have united. It would have been nice if they united for uh, something true as opposed to something false. But that's beside the point. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, Fanny, I still had stuff to do for the atheist movement when I left, but um, uh, I don't think there's a place for me there now. However, uh, I am doing my own videos. Uh, I'll speak sometimes on atheism, but really I'm going to concentrate on uh, what I feel is more relevant these days. I mean, frankly, um, not too many people care about the Ten Commandments on public lawn right now. Uh, it, it's just not a major issue. I don't really care about it right now. Um, uh, I, I think that um, the Supreme Court has been lost as far as separation of church and state is concerned. Um, I, I think that hopefully the organizations are preparing a state level attack so that we know what states are vulnerable to certain attacks once those major decisions are overturned. I would hope that there's some strategy and coordination happening behind the scenes so that people who are filing lawsuits know that they can file lawsuits from the different angles and support each other. I would hope that um, they are doing something to add value as an atheist movement, as opposed to just saying, yay, we're woke too, and we're atheists, and atheists are woke. Um, but I digress. Um, that my point is that all that, whatever is going to happen at the movement level, it's not going to include me and that's fine. Um, I got my channel, I got firebrand for good. I'm going to be expressing myself and, uh, I'm, I, I, you know, atheism isn't my thing. It, I mean, I'm still an atheist, but the atheist movement isn't my, my thing anymore. Um, mm -hmm. it can't be, uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, civil yeah, rights, I hope civil you're rights. to do the things on your channel to bring some, you know, uh, more to people in the yes. in in the sense of, I, just like you mentioned, I think there is a lot of work to be done, and I yeah. hope the organizations recognize that and do it for it, because uh, the secularism, for me, it feels like it, I felt that in Brazil was something that is in the constitution and is totally the theor theoretical, because we we see Bolsonaro portraying the God's campaign, you know, or talking about how he's the Messiah and using all the religious pledging that, for example, you guys suffered the same thing with Trump in the United States. Yeah. So it's like, well, I guess secularism has a lot to to be work on that sense still. And, and I think even in the sense that like we should not allow, so that doesn't drive people the same way it will not drive people to vote just because they are religious, will not drive atheists to not vote just because there are people using religiosity as well, you know. And here in Canada, in the same way, it's like I, I moved to Canada believing that I would not have to deal with these problems we have in, in Brazil and the Christian party. Just across, the, just the, uh, the provincial elections are going on, and just this year, completely new Christian party. And if you go through their uh, plans of government, and there is public money into church schools, into religious classes for the weekends. Yeah. So I think that is totally against what we believe is constitution, what is secularism, what the way we should be dealing with politics. And uh, I guess the work is just starting. So yeah. <laughs> as uh, I mentioned, I think with Nate, Tassi, when I used to hear 
20, 2050, we're going to have more atheists. And it feels like, yeah, we have 30 long years ahead because it's very far from what I believe to be more secular up here. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, 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 I've certainly seen the secularism happening here. I mean, um, I, I've seen the growth of atheism really, really pronounced. Of course, I live in Washington, so there's a lot of atheists here. But, I mean, uh, hopefully, I mean, it's going to be a real interesting year. It's going to be a real interesting decade, Vanny. I don't know where this country is going. I mean. And you know what I'm, what I, I feel like, because many of us that have felt like, oh, uh, we, we've we felt in the last decade that we progressed. It's like, yeah, I talk about, I came out of a closet as an atheist and I had felt much more prejudice before than I do nowadays, but it's still not fine because i feel like what we feel normalized there is another movement that see for example i've mentioned these people the the movement after jordan jordan peterson that came with the idea of like oh there is a islamization of the west now we need a new we have new new apologetics these right. uh, utilitarians that is like, oh, we need to make more Christians. And even talking about reproducing as religious groups to fight this other force when it should be, if we were enlightened already, it would be like, no, the answer is secularism. So everybody can hold their little religion, but in the public level, we, we can deal, we can all be civil. And understand that, yeah, go pray in your church, in your mosque, in your house, whatever. But there is such a thing as respecting others and be civil and be public, be political. And um, yeah, so there is a lot to, to be talked about this issue. And I love that you still have your brand. You know, go, go guys, check the the channel, Firebrand for Good. Yes. <laughs> and follow and, me on Twitter. I'm at Mr. Atheist Pants. <laughs> it's amazing thank and, you very much for coming david and uh you want to leave any message tell people how to follow support and uh and buy yeah <laughs> i mean yeah so my, my video channel is firebrand for good um my my youtube that's my youtube channel uh and my uh subscribe star is also firebrand for good and my um and my twitter is mr atheist pants follow me there i'm very active on twitter uh even though it's kind of a cesspool of hate i'm still seeing it i'm still living there um and thank you fanny for bringing me back on the show i really enjoy our conversations and i hope to do it again sometime real soon definitely i i love talking to you as well and thank you guys for coming thank you very much for coming dave and i'll stop recording here and see okay. you guys next video okay <laughs> bye 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 thanks thanks fanny <laughs>